Good morning and welcome. Just a reminder as we gather um, to please keep your masks on in the queues and to look around you and make sure that your neighbors have the space that they need to feel comfortable. Uh, you will see some of us take off our masks here to uh, preach, to read, and to lead if we are fully vaccinated. So please be assured that that is the case if you see somebody remove their mask to read or to lead. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. God be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent the king Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O oh, seer, go flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophecy there, but never again prophecy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock and the Lord said to me, Go prophecy to my people Israel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Who shall spring up from the earth? And the 
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the Baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet, out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Herod regretted killing John. It was a guilt that haunted him, so much so that he convinced himself that Jesus, John's cousin, was instead his reincarnation or his repossession returned to convict Herod of his crime. It's a nice question how people respond to the Gospel and to Christ. There are those moments, rare but profound, when even Peter falls to his knees and begs, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Jesus came to the Galilean countryside Proclaiming repentance before the coming kingdom, confession is an appropriate response. Yet others, desperate in their need, came to him for healing. They had already run out before God. All that they could imagine could have caused their current suffering, and they had come up short. Now they looked only for mercy. And Jesus looked upon them with compassion, and he healed them. Some came searching for wisdom, whether in the crowds on the hillside, leaning into his Beatitudes, or skeptically, ironically looking to poke holes in his gospel in case it might otherwise change their hearts. Jesus heard them all, reiterating to anyone who would listen, his gospel of repentance, of mercy, embodying God's steadfast and forbearing love. 
Sadly, Herod did not come to Jesus. When he killed John, though, when he killed John, Jesus' cousin, Herod did not act alone. Herodias, his former sister-in-law and new wife, is often cast as the true perpetrator here, putting out a contract on John that Herod had no choice but to fulfill. We don't know the age of her daughter, whether she might bear some blame for failing to recoil in horror at her mother's suggestion. Then there were the soldiers who carried out the act in cold blood. Do they bear no guilt for executing an innocent man simply because they were so ordered? But one of the guests at the feast. I'm curious about those people. Herod, we are told, was torn about severing John's head since he regarded the man as righteous and holy. Yet he had made promises in front of his guests and didn't want to lose face. Were they such a bloodthirsty crowd that they would rather see the letter of Herod's drunken, excited oath carried out before them than offer some substitute, some way out for Herod and for John? Was there not one who would stand up, speak up against this atrocity? Not one who would step in? Herod was fully responsible for his own decisions and actions. But he wasn't the only person responsible for the death of John, the cousin of Christ. We've all known situations where we should have spoken up but didn't. When a racist or sexist joke was told or bullying was observed, or worse, we, the world, bore witness to the murder of a man on the streets of Minneapolis last summer, and we saw how afraid anyone must be in the moment to help how powerless to avert tragedy. And yet since then, how many of us have shied away from addressing the situation by demanding reforms, still afraid of the ramifications, still relying on the conviction of one person to carry the blame of us all. It is a fearful thing to confront him. And it is a fearful thing to confront our own guilt. Herod and Herodias hardened their hearts. By the time Jesus finally appeared before Herod, he was over it. Who knows about the dancer and the soldier, what moral injuries they carried and how they were spun off. But the guests at the feast, we can relate to the ordinary people caught up in an extraordinary moment, can't we? Confronted unexpectedly with the violence of greed, lust and rage that rule too many of our decisions. From our seats at the table, from their seats at the table, they have a choice to make whether to let Herod have his way and live with the horror of John's beheading or whether to speak up, to speak out, to hope to hell that someone else at the table has their back. We all have moments that we regret, personal words and actions we wish we could take back, flows with which we wish we had not gone, systems of oppression which we have accepted or from which we have benefited philosophies of greed from which we have failed to protect the poor. Where we have failed and share the guilt of Herod and his guests, we have a pathway to forgiveness. Every time that we come together, we make our confession and God hears us. If there are particularly poignant sins that plague us, 
there is in our prayer book a form for personal and private confession with a priest. None of us is alone in our sin. And none need wander alone seeking forgiveness. God has provided for our absolution. And God will provide new opportunities to do the right thing, to refrain from doing wrong for the sake of the proud, to make reparations for harm that has already happened. God grant us the grace to accept those opportunities. Herod had one when Jesus was sent to him late in his life, and he squandered it. But fed and led by Christ, we need neither harden our hearts against guilt, nor wallow in it. Fed and led by Christ, we are free. Unlike Herod, we need not be haunted or hardened by our guilt. We can, like Peter, fall to our knees and confess our guilt before Christ, our Saviour, and he will raise us up. We can, as those in need of healing, present ourselves for mercy, and he will have compassion upon us. We can, like those who heard the call beside the Sea of Galilee, and followed without question, repent, and turn our hearts to follow in the way of Christ wherever it may lead us. We can come to Jesus. Here at Christ's table, we can rest and refresh our bodies and souls and spirits for the love of God. Our confessions are heard, our forgiveness is announced, our frailties are understood, and we are reminded. Herod is not our host, nor does he rule over us, but only Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as you are comfortable as we join together in the nice evening. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father. pray for the church here and throughout the world, for its ministers, its members, its mission, for churches in troubled parts of the world where the church has stood fast against injustice and evil.
Let us pray for this nation and all in authority. Let us pray for the welfare of the world. Let us pray for the particular concerns of this community. Let us pray for those in need, suffering, or any kind of trouble. Let us pray for those who have died. Let light perpetual shine upon them. I invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving outside of the world. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God's power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in my eyes. Blessed is one who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Saviour Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance. <laughs> Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is the We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, but as we forgive those who trespass against us, and we do not enter into temptation, but let us deliver us from evil. For thy name is in heaven, and never heart.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, but we all share in the one bread. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal Lord, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Go in peace, and love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.